I've heard hundreds and maybe thousands of new parents say that their baby hates being swaddled. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about swaddling, why it's done, and the right way to do it. Hi there, welcome back to Nurse Carly. This is your resource for everything pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and baby care. Today, we're gonna to talk about swaddling. One of the first things we teach new parents in the hospital is how to swaddle your baby. There are definitely a few things you need to know about swaddling, so I'm going to get into it right now. Before we get started, just remember to like and subscribe if you wanna hear more content like this. Okay, let's get into it. So why do we swaddle babies in the first place? The first thing you need to know is that swaddling is definitely optional. This is not something you have to do. Parents find it a helpful tool when it comes to helping their baby to become soothed, calm, and ready for sleep. The thought behind swaddling your baby is that it's designed to mimic the environment of the womb, which is where your baby spent so much time getting comfortable. If you think about it, inside mom, the baby is in a very snug, tight environment, especially towards the end of that last trimester. The baby's arms are typically across their body like this. They're snug in the fetal position that we hear about, and it's very warm, it's dark. These are the environmental conditions that we wanna try to mimic during what we call the fourth trimester or that first newborn period. When you're in the hospital, they might hand you your baby looking like this. And this is baby Katie. She helps me with a lot of my videos. So this is how your baby will be handed to you most likely in the hospital. And as you can see, she is swaddled snugly in this little thin hospital blanket that are oh so popular in every hospital system. Either your labor and delivery nurse or your postpartum nurse will probably teach you how to swaddle your baby just like this. There are a couple different ways to swaddle, but it all has the same basic principles. Here's the important things to know about swaddling your baby. The first thing is when you are swaddling your baby, you're going to be using a thin blanket. This is not a fluffy, thick comforter. This is not anything except a very thin material. And the reason for that is we don't want anything that's going to have the potential to become unwrapped and babies are not to be in a bed with a fluffy blanket that could potentially come over their head or cause any sort of risk for suffocation. The other thing is we want a thin blanket because we don't wanna run the risk of our baby overheating. Overheating is known to be a cause of SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome. And we are always trying to reduce the risk of SIDS with newborns. So knowing how to swaddle your baby like this is definitely a helpful trick and it will be helpful to you while you're in the hospital with your newborn, but I actually find that by the time you get home, you need to bring in some better tools than just a thin little blanket like this. This is just my opinion, but I have had really great success with all three of my personal babies, as well as parents that I've helped with their newborns by using a different type of swaddle that I'm gonna show you here. This is one of my favorite swaddles on the market, and I'm gonna show you the features that I really like about this. First of all, the jersey material is very soft and it's very lightweight. I also really appreciate that they added this mesh right here because it has it's basically a ventilation system. So again, we're trying to prevent the baby becoming overheated and this helps for airflow. The next thing I really like about this swaddle is the zipper down the front, which makes it super easy. You don't have to worry about wrapping blankets. So then once you unzip this swaddle, you can see the real star of the show that I love. This helps, this makes it so much easier for parents to swaddle a newborn whose arms might be moving, you know, a little bit crazy. So what this does is it allows you to be able to wrap your baby's arms in this portion. And this actually is for newborn. So it has this, another piece right here that Velcros up. And it's kind of like a little pouch inside the swaddle for the baby to be more secure on the inside. And then you just zip it up, up the middle. It also has a double zipper feature. So there's gonna be a zipper down here and this makes it super easy. If you need to do a middle of the night diaper change, you can unzip and kind of do the diaper change that way. And you don't have to fully unswaddle your baby, which any parent knows is kind of a pain in the middle of the night. Plus it, it wakes them up a lot more and we really want to try to avoid that. I'll go ahead and show you what baby Katie looks like in this swaddle. So you can see here, this is what she looks like on the inside of the swaddle. Her arms are secured by her sides. And then this little Velcro piece comes up here. And this is what she looks like all zipped in. There are lots of different types of swaddles on the market. I've told you that I have at least a few favorites, including this one, which I will link below. Another safety recommendation from the AAP regarding the use of swaddles that you can purchase is to make sure that you're not using anything weighted. 
weighted swaddles, weighted clothing, or anything weighted that you're placing on your baby is not recommended for safe sleep. In the AAP's new guidelines for safe sleep as of July 2022, they do not recommend against swaddling, but they do want parents to know that there are some safe guidelines to follow. So we've kind of covered the first one, which is that you need to be using a thin blanket. If you're going to use the blanket method, make sure that it's with a thin material, a lightweight material. The second thing is when you're using any type of swaddle method, you wanna make sure that the bottom, the leg portion of your baby is loose. Snugly swaddling the legs of your baby poses a risk for what's called hip dysplasia. And this is basically a disorder of the hip joint which can happen because the baby is still developing. And if you, if you restrict this area of the baby too tightly, it can lead to that issue. So we want to make sure that when we're swaddling, the leg area is loose like this so that they have the ability to move their legs up and down and back and forth and all that. So the snug part when it comes to swaddling is more up here and it's not too tight. It's just a little compression right here so that their arms are down by their, by their side. Now, why do we do this to the baby's arms? Something that happens when your baby is a newborn is they have what's called a startle reflex. The startle reflex is typically responsible for a lot of unnecessary waking. The startle reflex is basically when your baby startles themselves awake because they don't have control. It's a motor skill that they haven't developed yet. So swaddling helps to suppress the startle reflex. Now on that note, the AAP does want parents to know that there is no evidence that says that swaddling will prevent SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. So here's what the AAP says about the risk of swaddling. There are some risks to swaddling. Swaddling may decrease a baby's arousal so that it's harder for them to wake up. That is why swaddling can seem so attractive to new sleep deprived parents. The baby sleeps longer and doesn't wake up as easily. But we know that decreased arousal can be a problem and may be one of the main reasons that babies die of SIDS. As with any choices we make as parents, there are some associated risks and we are mainly just trying to reduce the risk of SIDS as much as possible. The best way to reduce the risk of SIDS is by practicing safe sleep, which I'm going to cover in another video. Please remember anytime you have your baby swaddled, you always place them on their back on a firm sleep surface made for babies. The other important thing that I want you to know about swaddling your baby is that it is a great method for newborns, typically up to two months old. The reason we say up to two months is because around that time, some babies may be attempting to start to learn to roll over. If your baby shows any signs of being able to move in a way that might be rolling over, you stop swaddling immediately. The reason is a swaddled baby that learns to roll has the risk to become stuck in this position in their crib, which is a major SIDS and suffocation risk. So we want to avoid that at all costs. So again, if you see any signs that your baby is starting to roll, you wanna stop swaddling and move on to a different type of sleep item, like a sleep sack, a wearable blanket, because we never wanna put anything like a blanket in the crib with your baby. So that's everything you need to know about how to swaddle your baby, why we do it, and how to do it in the safest way possible. I hope you liked this video and don't forget to check out my safe sleep video if you liked everything you saw here. Please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.